North Bimini's shark mound was completely surrounded by Atlantic Ocean. Florida's panther mound is completely surrounded by the waters of the Everglades. What we do next is to switch mounds in the kite. We will dispose of the shark mound and replace it with Florida's panther mound. The other grid points of the kite remain the same. This, of course, changes the values in the kite. We drop the shark whose grid point value was two-thirds of pi and are replacing it with a panther mound, grid point value 30 pi. This time we divide. To find that putting the panther on the tail of the kite changes the overall value to 5 pi. Checking everything once again to protect against losing anyone's concentration. North America's largest aboriginal monuments, bar none. Another mathematical constant. Okay, so far we have 4 pi and 5 pi kite grids. But how do they serve? Maybe we can someday swing the tail of the kite eastward to 3 pi and find some sunken Atlantean pyramid, or westward to 6 pi for something the Mayans lost in the Caribbean. Maybe. But the logic being conveyed here by these ancient builders says two things to me very clearly. First, water. Remember, both the shark and the panther are surrounded by it. And two, Swing the tail of the kite. But to what? How about to water itself? Something significant underwater, like perhaps an underwater spring. Like maybe the mud hole spring off Florida's west coast. Good point value, one tenth of the radian. 5.72957. The top of the kite holding its corners on the eye, monks, and the device as usual. We now drop the panther mound from the bottom and replace it with mud hole springs grid point value. Then multiply and voila. Instant recognition. The value of three fifths of the radian. And As we already know, it's the grid point of warm mineral spring in the global matrix. And found by mathematically oriented swinging kites. What else is there to say? The water mounds found major water sources. And when they wrote their final equation, the answer came out right on warm mineral springs. Now we know. The information Ponce de Leon found concerning the Fountain of Youth was valid. Problem was, he didn't know the pyramid grid system, which had encoded its location a hundred centuries earlier. He had no hope of finding it without resorting to actual trial and error legwork. The ancients revered warm mineral springs so highly that they built the major monuments of North America at such grid points as could point it out to us as soon as we came to understand the mathematical precisions of the earth. Fascinating by itself, our search has also explained how a portion of their global grid actually works. I wonder what else they revered that we haven't found yet. The matrix is still young. The search continues. Thank you. This is the ground plan of the Acapana Pyramid at Tiwanaku, Bolivia. It contains part of the message explaining why it is where it is. 
Some of you know how to do this. For those who do not, it's really quite simple. The Great Pyramid contains part of the law, the mathematical pi ratio. Its slope angle from the apex downward has a tangent value which we can find with a modern pocket calculator. Multiply this tangent by the four sides of the pyramid and we find pi memorialized forever. Having been so advised, we should apply this ratio to what we see in other pyramids around the world. For example, Mexico's Pyramid of the Sun. In this side elevation, notice that the upper bodies of the monument are offset toward the rear. Count the sloped surfaces, which, as we see, have been deliberately separated two slopes in the lower body and four in the upper, two and four. From the front, the sun appears uniform in its presentation. Now we see six slopes on five terraces. That's five and six. The sun, then, presents a simple mathematical formula when we recall that the Great Pyramid at Giza tells us to apply pi. The two, four, five, and six features on the sun pyramid become two pi, four pi, five pi, and six pi. Multiplied, we find this large irrational, a single number. What does it mean? Nothing at all, unless one is careful to notice that there are three other numbers which also multiply to meet it. The numbers 19, 41, and 30.0105. In these we find unquestionable meaning because at 19 degrees, 41 minutes, and 30.0105 seconds in the language of mapping, it is precisely where the Sun Pyramid situates on our maps. 19 degrees, 41 minutes, 30.0105 seconds north of the equator. That's not bad for the alleged savages that are supposed to have built this pyramid. Did they really know where the equator was? Two, four, five, and six. Yeah, they knew. And they also knew about the pi ratio, having been memorialized over at Giza. In fact, they knew every bit as much about global mapping as we do, if not more. The same geomathematical logic was incorporated in the Acapana Pyramid at Tiwanaku. Unfortunately, we cannot extract data from its terraces because people have been chopping away at this pyramid since the Spanish began sacking the West five centuries ago. It is so badly gutted today that no one knows how many terraces it had. Except me, but that's for another time. You see, while we can destroy a pyramid, we cannot destroy the mathematics which gave it form. In their immense wisdom, the builders made certain that the Acapana would never become silent. How did they manage this? By protecting its geomathematical data in its base plan. Proceed in much the same way we did at Teotihuacan's Pyramid of the Sun. Pay close attention to what we see. The emphasis here was on the 90 degree corner angle, of which there were exactly 16. 16 and 90. Then simply apply pi to the formula and find. Well, it's not as if we don't know what to expect.
16 degrees, 33 minutes, 08.567 seconds south of the equator. Even the pre-Inca knew where the equator was. The next question is, how old is Tiwanaku's Acapana? Is there a way to demonstrate its age? Possibly so. All we have to do is match its position against the oldest monument known. What might that be? The very same number that encodes the latitude of the Acapana Pyramid at Tiwanaku encodes the actual latitude of Sidonia's face north of the Martian equator. Geomathematical correlation. Now then, which came first? Sidonia's face or the Acapana Pyramid?